Das here and welcome to this week's YouTube lesson, which I'm going to be talking a little bit about limitation exercises. And a good example of one uh, that I use to work on motivic development and melodic phrasing, which is something a couple of people have been asking me about as of late. Also, before I get into it, a huge thank you to everyone that's been supporting the channel so far. I've received a bunch of messages over the past few weeks. Uh, about the lessons, about the playing videos, and stuff that I'm doing on here, and just uh, the information I'm just putting out there, I guess. Uh, thank you so much for all the support, it really means the world, and it's great to see this growing uh, in the way that it has since I started posting more regularly back in March and April-ish. So, uh, thank you once again. And for those who are new to the channel, please do consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell. Uh, I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff that'll be really useful for you guys, and hopefully you can uh, get something out of it. And it's just my way of just sharing information with every one of you. So, let's get into the lesson. And today's lesson was inspired by a conversation I was having with Jack Handyside. Uh, some might have seen I did a bit of an Instagram hang uh, with Jack. Uh, and quite recently, and it was just a fun time. We were talking for a little over two hours, actually, about just music, life, art, um, and teaching and practice, and this was one of the things that came up, because he's a wonderful teacher, uh, and is also posting some of his own content. By the way, I am going to link the Instagram chat and his channel and his uh, Instagram profile, so you can go check that out and listen to the whole thing if you would like. Um, so be sure to check the description box. But we were talking about limitation, using that as an idea to foster creativity in certain situations, get ourselves out of ruts, force ourselves to do something different, and I vaguely covered this a while ago in the never-ending 16th exercise, which is an example of this. Now, this might be familiar to some people who have studied this way or have worked with a couple of things like this, but uh, for those who aren't, what is a limitation exercise? In essence, it's kind of what it says on the tin, in that a lim we place a limitation or a rule on ourselves that we cannot break, and we do our best to navigate a scenario whilst maintaining that in mind. Now, there are a couple of benefits to this. One of the major benefits is that it helps, uh, it can help at least, um, organize your practice session a little more, uh, or be a creative way of organizing a concept, because sometimes we enter the practice room and we feel completely lost because there's so much stuff to work on and we don't know where to begin, and this is a great little way of going, okay, I've been working on this general thing, I have to try accomplish X idea in the way that I can. And this forces you to use a new concept or forces you to be mindful and present of uh, maybe some inherent deficiencies you might have in your own playing. Another benefit of this is that it's easily applicable to anything. So quite the opposite, maybe sometimes we have, <clears throat> instead of having too much information, we know what we have and we know what we need to be working on, but maybe we need a more mentally stimulating way of practicing it. Sometimes we can get caught up in playing our exercises that have been prescribed to us or that we've got from so many other people and um, we learn to do the exercise but then we don't learn to actually apply the lessons learned 
from the exercise. Uh, so the limitation can also be applied across various disciplines. Uh, it doesn't have to just be improvisation or melodic phrasing or motivic development like I was talking about before. Uh, we can establish this as something to do with technique. I can only play ideas that are hybrid picked or I can only use legato uh, in the broad sense. Um, chords, I can only use certain voicings to try help reinforce using a new voicing you learned in context. Um, it can do with your ear training. Okay, the rule is I have to sing sing a note and then play it, or something like that, uh, to that effect. It doesn't have to be applied to a tune. Or you could apply it to tunes. Okay, I have to play guide tones or whatever. There are so many ways and so many possible avenues that you can come up with that really the only ironic, uh, I know, the only limitation on the rule that you set yourself is your own creativity. Now, aside from this, it, speaking of creativity, it forces you to kind of look at open-ended scenarios and kind of instill a framework. That is the function of the rule. It, it's, uh, it's creating a little box that you have to be creative within. For example, you can say, I am only allowed to use triads. That is the only limitation you put on yourself, and you can only use triads to improvise over a certain progression or a tune. Now, the challenge in that is making that musically viable. Does this sound good? Can I create good sounding ideas with good time and good rhythm? If so, then you're starting to learn to use a concept that you might have been working on in a more musical fashion and also flexing your creative muscle or your brain, if you would, to try problem solve in real time. So, okay, enough about the explanation of the exercise. Let's actually get into an exercise that you guys can use. And this is one I use with a lot of my students, uh, especially when I see students have a hard time phrasing melodically uh, or I get students who ask me, how do you phrase melodically, or how do you work on your motivic development? So I give them this exercise, and I was kind of doing that in the intro, um, playing a bit of a half performance, half exercise demonstration of It Could Happen to You. It's a really well-known jazz standard. And uh, what I do is I give, could be with any tune, I tell a student, okay, you have to improvise through this tune, let's say it's a chorus, let's say it's two choruses, that's one other limitation, but you are not allowed to use language, uh, as in uh, language in the form of a lick or a line or any technical phrases that you rely on. And actually this kind of harkens back to something I've been working on a lot over the past year, uh, actually even as far back as the end of last year in trying to rely less on my chops and be a lot more conscious of the melodic content I'm playing and not falling back to my technique when I feel uncomfortable or when I feel like I need to... When I feel uncomfortable or I don't know a situation, sometimes that's the crutch I use to prop myself up. It's just having a better awareness of what's going on around me musically. So I give this to students and I tell them, okay, you're not allowed to use your language cannot use your lines, you cannot use your chops. The only thing you can do is play melody, pure melody. So essentially it's kind of fixing the problem. Nice. So it's kind of fixing the problem, but by different means. Rather than explaining a concept, it's just forcing the student to actually force themselves to do something that they have to that they've been wanting to do. And in doing so, the student sometimes pieces together for themselves what might be the issue. So for example, let's take It Could Happen To You. Let's take the tune. And what the exercise might look like is something like...
So you'll notice I actually am just phrasing purely melodically, but I did actually repeat myself. So then sometimes if I find myself repeating ideas too much or repeating melodic resolutions, then I'll put another limitation on myself and say, okay, I can only repeat an idea or a resolution maximum once, or I cannot repeat it at all to an extent. I know it's, it's it can sometimes be considered extreme, but I'll get to that in, in a second. So let's say I've hit the melody there. I cannot use that fragment of the melody again. And sometimes what I'll actually do is even be, try catch myself in the moment. Because invariably what's going to happen is your mind is going to deviate. Your mind is going to want to go to the things it's naturally comfortable with. And what is a really great exercise in and of itself by doing this is forcing, forcing yourself to go, oh, I'm starting to drift into that autopilot mode and seeing if you can steer yourself away from it. So maybe sometimes I might feel the urge to play. Right? I might be, f I might feel an urge to play, okay, I want to play 2-5 vocabulary. But that's not the point of what I'm trying to work on. I'm trying to work on playing through a tune, playing melodically, and in such a way that the listener can hear the harmony without me relying on language or licks that very obviously define the harmony. So if I feel the urge to play, right? and I see that 2-5 come up, I might take the general idea, the general gist of the language I have the urge to play, but instead of playing the line verbatim, I might play much more melodic, and it's forcing me to be aware of my melodic control. Now the challenge with this exercise is exactly what I mentioned. You cannot rely on stuff you know, and you have to force yourself to hit the chords and the changes in a way that has you be melodic, has you phrase, and allows you to develop an idea, but also in a way where the listener can follow what you're doing. Because sometimes doing this may highlight the fact that you rely too much on your vocabulary, or maybe that, yes, you have your vocabulary and you know where to use it, but you aren't familiar with how the lessons that you learn from that vocabulary and the ideas that you need to take on to develop a more melodic uh, soloing concept. Now, another idea you can use with this and that you can play along with is force yourself to use one idea. Let's say if you're working on motivic development, you only use that one idea throughout the entire solo. So let's, uh, roughly speaking, you can change it a little bit, but let's say you take... I was taking that one idea and moving it as far as I could. And you can challenge yourself, okay, let's do a chorus. And maybe when a chorus becomes, or if a chorus is too difficult, half a chorus, like that. Then do a full chorus, then see, okay, can I take this idea through two choruses? Then maybe say, okay, every chorus I have to institute a new idea and stick to that one idea. You see where I'm going with this. Effectively, it's challenging your creativity and your ability to problem solve. But in, in doing so, what you end up doing is finding your own way of navigating tough situations and stuff that is objectively difficult. And in doing so, you find stuff that is unique to you and that helps you find different facets of your musical personality, but also exposes things that you may have a tendency to rely on a little too much.
So I hope this lesson was really helpful for you guys and really interesting and gave you some new perspectives on maybe how to practice uh, or how to practice your motivic development and your melodic playing. If you'd like to see more of what I do, as I mentioned earlier, please do subscribe. I post a lesson every Thursday and just, you know, creative stuff, what I happen to be working on, ideas. And I have some ideas for some stuff coming up in the future that I'm very excited to share. So new lessons, new videos, new concepts, whatever it may be. So look forward to seeing you here as a part of the community on the channel, and I will see you very soon.